So welcome. Um, our head office is located on the sacred land that has been a site of human activity for over 15,000 years. This land is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, and the Wendat, and is now home to many diverse peoples. We acknowledge that the city of Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaty, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. We acknowledge these nations and any other records or unrecorded, unrecorded first peoples who cared for the land. As the past, present, and future caretakers of this land named Tuckeranto, where the trees meet the gathering place, where the trees meet the water and the gathering place. As settlers, we entered into an agreement to share this land equitably. As settlers, this recognition of contributions and historic importance of Indigenous peoples must also be clearly and overtly connected with our collective commitment to make the promise and the challenge of truth and reconciliation real in our communities. We are grateful for the opportunity to work with communities and on this territory. Harvey, do you have um, something to share about your perspective on land acknowledgement? Yes, thank you. Um, I think it's important that we not only make the acknowledgement, but we have a personal reflection. What does it mean? For me, I grew up in a small town, Ontario, uh, not far from the Six Nations, the reserve largest in Canada. And yet I had really no um, interaction with Indigenous people and grew up with really negative stereotypes. And my brother and I played cowboys and Indians. So at this stage of my life, it's really important to, uh, to begin to understand the truth and the impact of colonization and, uh, and how we uh, have, have profited as settlers. So this is part of my own personal journey to understand uh, the truth and, and then to see how we can all work together in what's needed for true reconciliation. Mick Witch. Yeah. Thank you, Harvey. So Dr. Harvey, whoop, whoop us. Dr. Harvey Skinner is a professor of psychology and global health and was founding dean of the Faculty of Health for York University. He's a registered psychologist on, in Ontario and a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences. His current focus is promoting global and mental health, drawing on Eastern, Indigenous, and Western worldviews and practices. Harvey has completed advanced training in Qigong uh, practices, which master te teachers Lee Holden, Te Teja Bell, and Robert Pang, as well as training in capacitor body-based healing practices with Dr. Patricia Kane. Currently, he's leading online sessions for stress busting, 30 minutes of magical practices, open to students, staff, faculty, and the community of York University. At a personal level, Harvey is married to Susan Harris, has five children and eight grandkids. He maintains a regular practice of mindfulness meditation and Qigong. So before I turn it over to Harvey to share with us these practices, I would like to get a better sense of who's in the room with us. So I'm just going to pull up a couple of polls. I'm going to start with who is joining us today. So are you a professional that works with children? Are you a parent or are you both? This will just help us to get a better sense of who you are, who you work with, and how we can best support you. So we see that a lot of us are professionals that work with children and who are also parents. So that's good for us to know. The next poll I'm going to pull up is where are you joining us from? So this will help us get a better sense of who we're working with in the country and who we're supporting.
So we can see here that many of us are in central Canada, so Ontario and Quebec. Um, many of us are joining from the provinces, uh, the Prairie provinces. Um, we have some folks in the Atlantic region as well as the West Coast. So thank you all for joining us today from across Canada. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Skinner. Well, thank you. It's uh, a real pleasure to be uh, here today. Uh, let's see, it's going to speak about. So we all encounter stress, right? Our kids encounter stress. So uh, what can we do about it? And um, so today is going to be fairly interactive. It's uh, not going to lecture because I believe to really learn about this, you've got to say, get below the ears. You have to actually engage your whole body and, and your mind, your spirits in this learning. So the key is if we're going to be effective as parents and as teachers or uh, health, uh, social, educational professionals, um, we have to have our own wellness, our own resiliency. So that's really important so that we are positioned to, to help our students, to help our kids, to help our clients. So, so today I'm going to go through some practices and, and uh, one way I'll talk about how you can do them for yourselves and then I'll show how we can adapt it and make them more playful for using with our kids and for me with my grandkids. So um, these practices are safe um, and uh, the only thing is one or two of them might trigger some strong emotions. So if that is happening, then it's important to be able to have your own safe space. So if you're working with a child, so that they have a safe space where they can think about the room or garden so that could help them to, and to manage the scene. Um, I put together a really, I think, a useful handout that uh, goes through all the techniques and, and gives a number of references. So I really encourage you to download this from the website. Um, so with that being said, um, <clears throat> let's get started. So we're going to stand up for the first uh, three or four practices and then we'll sit down. So what can we do if we really want to begin to have fun and sort of warm up and have these kind of exercises? So you could do them if you're in a classroom, could be at the start of a class, or if you need to sort of get a, a mid sort of a session kind of break to get sort of the kids going or energized. Um, I'm gonna go through three and I'll show them how we can do them as adults and then we'll do a little more playful version of it. These are from uh, Qigong. Qigong is an ancient practice over 5,000 years coming out of uh, ancient China. And a lot of the practice evolved by watching the animals and mimicking those movements. And there's a lot of great research today showing how movement exercise like Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga can be incredibly beneficial for our mental health, for our physicality, for our longevity. So the first one is dog wags its tail. So just to stand with your body erect and just start moving your hips so we keep our body erect and a little string holding us up to the cosmos. And then we just start adding a little more hip motion, putting in our shoulders. And then we start to move in the neck and then we can let our butt sit a little more on the back and start doing this a little more vigorously. And just visualize that you're a dog. I've got two dogs, Meek and Billy, and when they're happy, they're always wagging their tails. And it's really incredible. Um, so go a little faster, a little faster. And I defy you to do this movement without having a smile on your face. It just brings to me kind of joy. It's a great way of just wanting to kind of get loosened up. And it's great for lateral movement. But so often we're bent over our computers, right? This is great lateral movement. So that's the first one that we're going to do. Um, the second one is monkey washes its fruit. So this is a really good one for balance. And uh, so just put your hands out in front and just visualize that we're washing fruit. Okay. Again, keep our bodies straight. And, and then we're going to put a little monkey paw as we pick up the pieces of fruit and we bring them up. And we're going to go up on our toes and put them in the basket in front of us. Remember that now, we're going to wash them our fruit. So this is good 
great way to loosen up your forearms, your wrists, and uh, your shoulders a bit. You can put the hips there a bit, okay? Bring the fruit up, and we put it in the basket. This is monkey washes its fruit. Again, another fun one. These first three are animal frolics. When we come up, this is great for balance. Just hold it a little bit more up on your toes and drop the fruit in place, okay? The third one we'll do is tagger, tagger claws. And we'll do a, uh, we'll do a sort of happy tagger. So let's get on our tagger face and create our tagger claws. And so we're going to move down slowly and make a bit of a tiger girl, or a bit of happy girl, girl, right down, almost touching the floor, and then come back up. This is really a great one for girl, for releasing any tension, and it's great for warming up your whole body, girl, yeah. This is a tiger. Once more, girl. You do this about two minutes. Each of these practices, I would say, you could do two to three minutes. When I'm leading my stress busting series, which I give info at the end, that you may want to join. I usually do each of these practices for about two minutes or so. So these are great warm up exercises and kind of fun exercises. So if I have kids in front of me, let's say I've got my three. Um, girl grandkids, Maya who's 11, Haley's nine, and uh, Amelia's six. So I'm down, so come on girls, let's spam a Harvey, let's do some, let's play like the animals, so you want to do that? So we're going to do um, a dog or a monkey and a tiger, so Amelia, you're the youngest, you get to pick. Um, what do you want to do, we do first? Well, we're going to do dog. Okay, and uh, Haley, what do you think we should do? Oh, I want to do the monkey. Okay, Haley, and I guess, uh, you know, you're left there with Maya with doing the tagger. So come up beside me, Haley, and let's start to do dog wags its tail. So let's just start swinging our hips. Imagine we're little puppies, you know, my two dogs, Billy, and Meek, and how they put their tails right. So let's sit over and let's just swing our shoulders and let our tails. Yeah, and we can move around a little bit if we want. Yeah, just let them go. All right, dog wags its tail. A nice big smile on our face. We're happy dogs wagging our tails. Dog, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little faster, a little slower. Slow it down, slow it down. Slow it down, yeah. Okay. Okay, Haley, we got now. Well, we got the monkey. Okay. Now we monkey. So we're pretend we got in front of us. Basically, a big bowl there where there's lots of fruit. We're going to pick up a piece in each hand. We're going to start to wash it. We've got a bit of a washing bowl here, and we're washing the fruit. Okay, wash, 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 wash. And then we're going to pick this fruit up in front of us. We're going to come up on our tippy toes. We want. We're going to put it in the basket in front of us. Bring it down, kids. Wash some more fruit. What do you got? An apple in this hand, a pear in this hand. Bring it up and oh, oh take a bite. Oh, you can do that and put it in the basket. Come back down. Okay, wash, wash, wash. Some more fruit. Get up on our toes, tippy toes, tippy toes. In the basket. Wash some more. Wash, 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 wash. On our tippy toes. In the basket. Now let's take this basket of fruit and let's share it. Let's share it with each other. And we can share some with mommy and daddy if they come down to the room. Okay, so let's just walk around and share the fruit. Yeah. Nice to share this nice washed fruit. Beautiful. All right, Maya. Now we're going to do a tiger. Or we're going to be happy tiger. So a tiger face, but it was a happy one. And we had our little tiger claws. And the tigers are going to bend down and make a little bit of a gurry sound. And down. They want to come back up. Our tiger girls. Grr. Yes. Looking good there, kids. Grr. More. Grr. Come up the side. Grr. Other side. Grr. Back to center. Grr. Okay, come on up. We're going to finish. So cross your hands like this. Okay, and we're going to flip them out to the side and make a really strong girl noise. Are you ready? And a big smile. Are you ready? 
Oh, come on, you can do this one better. One more time. You're ready. You're ready. All right. Animal folks. Those are three. You could do all of them. You could do just one of them. And they're really neat ways to have fun and get things warmed up for your kids and for yourself. Next, let's look at what can we do when we want to calm down and uh, really be centered. So put your feet shoulder width apart, put your hands over your belly. So this is the adult version. Again, this is from Qigong called abdominal breathing. So inhale through your nose and as you do, you push your belly out because you want to expand the whole chest cavity. So inhale and exhale slowly through your nose. So just inhale and, and exhale slowly through your nose. You might count as you inhale. One, two, three, four. And exhale, four, three, two, one. Just continue this. So this actually is expanding. Because normally we're just breathing in our chest, right? This is getting in the whole cavity. It's moving the diaphragm down. So we're taking more oxygen. 80% of our energy comes from oxygen. So this is a great way of calming down, but we're also getting more oxygen. When you breathe slowly, particularly when you exhale through your nose, it's activating all the parasympathetic system, which is relax, rejuvenate, restore, which is against the fight or flight. That's what happens when you get that quick flash of energy, but it's sending all kinds of chemicals, cortisols and others around our body that over time are really destructive. So this is, you can also think of this as another way of expanding meditation, mindfulness. So just let your mind slow down. Breathe. Great way for calming. Thing to do at night before you go to bed if you really want to slow down or any time during the day. Okay. So how you can kind of gamify this or make it fun for kids is I call it the tummy balloon game. So say to kids, okay, let's pretend our tummies are a balloon and we're going to play with inflating and, and deflating, all right? So put our hands over our balloons, our tummies, are you ready? And we're going to breathe through our nose, okay? Not our mouth. Okay, always to the nose in and out. So are you ready? So we're going to inhale and just pop up the balloon. And exhale, let the balloon come slowly down again. Okay, who can do this slowly with me? If not quick, no, we can all do it quick. Let's do it slow. Are you ready? Slow, inhale. The balloon goes out. And exhale. Air comes out of the balloon. So let's just do this three more times. One, two, and three. Oh, so how does that make you feel? Hmm, I feel nice and calm, relaxed. How about you after doing this? Nice one, eh? So what do you do if you want to just get up in the day and you're not feeling much energy. So this is what you do at the adult level. It's called knocking on the door of life. Again, from Qigong. Just start to your body erect up and down and turn and start swinging back and forth and let your arms knock over your belly, in front and over your back. And if you think of a little light that's going through your belly button right through your back here, that back point is a major acupressure point for energy. So this is like getting a lightning flash of energy and it's up on the back. So this is a great way to activate energy. It's good when you get up in the morning or you've been working and you're just kind of feeling in a slump. You just want to get some more energy going. You can go a little faster, a little bit slower. It's called knocking on the door of life. Maybe you could just end by letting the hands just begin like they're floating through water. This is called water waves. So, knocking the door of life is activating the strong, powerful 
yang energy, and this is that soft yin energy going for the waves. So this is a great to do. And you just need to get energized, time train a day. So that's our adult version. What I do with the kids is I say, let's pretend we're helicopters. We're going to do some helicopter spins. Are you ready? So just start with me. Just start walking your hands, left and right. You can let them pop on your belly and your back if you want while we're getting our helicopter wings going. Back and forth, a little faster. We can raise them up a little more. And then we can start to make our moon. Okay, what kind of sound do the wings make? The helicopter make? Go, whirr. We start moving our whirr. Whirr, 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 Don't hit anybody, whirr, a little slower, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Great. You guys make great helicopters. That's what you can do with kids, you want to get them up and energized. Next, we're going to do shaking. And this is really great for adults releasing uh, negative energy, tensions, or thoughts. And you know, with animals, um, you know, with that horse and that would be shaking. You know, as athletes, before the start, say the race, you know, it's like they get anxiety, they just naturally into shaking. So just begin to shake, bounce up and down. You can raise your heels if you want. And just get into a nice shaking motion, loosen your shoulders, loosen your knees, just breathe naturally. It's all about something that bothering you this morning, thought or negative emotion, just let it go. And a great way too is just to let out a sound of ha sound. So do it with me three times. We're going to go right. Ah. 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 Let it go, let it go. A little faster now, a little faster. Hands up to the side, up the front, down again. Ah, let it go. Ah, ah. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And just breathe in slowly through your nose and exhale slowly. Just see how it feels. called chi, it's a life force energy. Just like the wind, you can't see the wind, but you see the effect of the wind moving, say the trees as they sway. This is the chi bubbling up and down our body. It's energy that we've activated. So it's a great one to do with kids. But come on, let's begin and do some shaking. We're gonna shake like the animals. We did animal stuff before. Are you ready? So you can do the one hip motion. Start to shake, 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 shake. Yeah, let's shake around. And I find if you make more of a dance, come on, dance with Grandpa Harvey. Shake, 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 shake. Yeah, yeah, shake your shoulder, shake this shoulder, shake this hip, shake this hip. Dance, 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 dance. Shake, 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 shake. shake. Round and round, hands up. Hands up front. Hands up. Hands down. This side. This side. Shake, 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 shake it, shake it. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. Ah. Oh. I was doing this once with the kids and it said, oh, feels like there's bubbly soda pop running up and down my arms. I made bubbles, all this tingling. So shaking is a great way for releasing uh, negative emotions, negative energy thoughts. And it's quite natural and it's amazing how effective it can be. All right. So we're now going to move into a couple of practices we do sitting down. I'm going to move my chair back. So next is um, Technique really builds on um, traditional Chinese medicine on acupressure, acupuncture points. We have these, there's just like we have our blood there's six systems going and, and our neurological systems. 
official Chinese medicine, there are meridians. There's actually 14 of these channels that run around the body and there are major points that energy run across the forehead and a huge number run across the back of the head here. So this is really an effective uh, technique, um, head holding for dealing with anxiety or headaches or just feeling overwhelmed. And just take one hand and put it over your forehead. And the other hand, just put it down just below your neck there, just below your head sort of goes out skull there and just just press in about medium pressure and just close your eyes. Breathe slowly. Now you, this is easy to do for yourself. And it's easy to do with someone else with their permission. You can ask if you can stand behind them or beside them and do the head hold. Breathe in slowly and exhale slowly. You can do this lying down in bed. I remember having this dealing with Susan, my wife's mom. Jean, when she was in hospice and close to passing on, was very anxious. So we just sat there and I just put my hands like this over her and she just calmed down beautifully. So it's something that you can do for all ages, these practices. It's a great way for just calming down and partly you're linking the front of the brain, that's the cortex, the new part of the brain with the, the back of the brain, that's the or the reptilian, the, the original brain, and that's where a lot of the key of our deep emotions are seated in. It's just creating a nice connection. And it's great for just allowing us to lessen anxiety, headaches, okay? Ah, feels good. So, dealing with kids and, um, um, you could do this in a classroom. Again, you could have all, all the you know, students do that. And with your own kids, it's great to ask, you know, do you want daddy to do this to help you? Or do you want to do it yourself? Or let's sit down and we'll do it together. I'll sit down beside you because, you know, if one of my kids now is really feeling, um, oh, it's really feeling upset. Oh, headaches, man, I really got headaches. Um, just, okay, so let's just... Well, let's just close our eyes and just calmly breathe. I'll try not to think about anything. Let's just breathe and relax. And if you do this for uh, one minute, two minute, children typically get a more uh, quicker uh, kind of re reaction or effect than, than adults do. So you may find that they would Oh, I'm feeling better. Um, that's really helping. So that's head holding. Another um, technique I'll go through for dealing with emotions, and this deals with more specific ones, is uh, the finger holds. And um, you can think of each finger again as sort of a, their channels and meridians that's going out, or like antennas, they bring energy in and energy about. We live in electromagnetic fields, there's energy all around us, right? Even being able to see me, sight is using electromagnetic energy and the sound. And each of our fingers relates to a particular emotion. So this is really useful for helping children develop you know, emotional intelligence for helping them to put names to emotions and, and, and uh, to, uh, to be able to able to see or to express their feelings. And it's good for adults too. So the thumb has to do with grief or fear. And you know, when we're smaller or babies, we'll often naturally just sort of suck our thumb that sort of as a soothing way of dealing uh, with grief. The first finger is for fear, like someone's pointing at you, the teacher is, or the parent, oh, daddy's telling me, or grandpa, you know, and you're ooh, reacting to the fear, that's this finger. This uh, middle finger, basically, if you turn it, um, you know, sort of, you know, um, <laughs> has to do um, with anger, um, rebellion, resentment. 
Then we have the fourth finger, uh, the ring finger. And this tends to relate to worry or tension and often you know, people might play with the ring when they're feeling a bit anxious. And then finally, we have the little guy, the pinky finger. And this relates to really the inner person in ourself, to our self-esteem, what we're feeling about ourselves. So this practice, and, and I'll, I'll go through it fairly, uh, fairly uh, quickly. No, but basically, you just sit in a chair and uh, relax and you know, soften your gaze or close your eyes and just pull onto your thumb. You can choose either hand to begin with. And just hold sort of gently and just start to breathe slowly in through your nose and out through your nose. And you may find after a while, you may begin to feel a bit of throbbing and as you're breathing in. This is all about grief and tears. And as you're breathing out, let go of those, the grief, the tears. Okay? You're breathing in slowly, positive energy. And just think of all that grief and pain just slowly going out through your thumb being released. So inhale and exhale, going nice through your thumb. Being relaxed. Okay. So now we'll move on to the first finger. This is all about fear. Fear. It happens. But it's important that we listen to the fear. Hold on to the finger and instead of trying to flee away or avoid it, let's just stay with the fear. And as we breathe in positive energy and exhale, just let the fear go. Just feel it letting go, letting go, letting go. Breathing in. And breathing out. So it's what we do with the fear, right? Just let it go, let it go. Feel it just bubbling out along your arm and out through that finger. Now let's move on to the middle finger. Finger for rage, anxiety. And important with rage and that that we that we learn how to spin it, take it and turn it into positive action. We may be upset against what's happening in the world and happening around us, what's happening in my organization or in my family. But let's think of what might I do positively if one instead of having rage and anger Move more to compassion and loving kindness for others. And use this rage. Some of our great leaders like Gandhi and others have been taken that rage and put it into positive sort of actions for charity and healing our world. Martin Luther King. Mandela, great ways of how they took what could have been real anger, rage, and turned into real positive action. Now move on to the ring, the index finger, and worry, preoccupation. And just as you breathe out, just let that flow out. Just let it go, let it go. Breathe in again. Letting it go. Just let it melt away. Beautiful breath. And now move on to the small finger, the little pinky finger. And this is where at times you're feeling down or hard on yourself. And you breathe slowly, just decide to go more gently on yourself. Be your friend. 
And you can let your sense of self-esteem as you're breathing in positive energy, building it in any reluctance is going away slowly, slowly. Okay, come back together for a moment. Put all your fingertips together in your lap and just breathe slowly. Just feel the integration now across each of the fingers. And how you're feeling more balanced in your emotions. All right, thank you. So, if you're doing this with kids, um, a great thing to do is to, one way to even start is to take a piece of paper, if you do it in a class project or you know, some young kids, and have them trace their hand. And then maybe they want to, they could even make a much bigger version of the hand. And then have them write onto, put word to the emotions. So, so what, you know, when you're feeling kind of um, down out about yourself, um, Tears and that or pain, you know. What's the word you want to use for that? You know, is it grief or pain? And you could write that down. And what about if you're oh really being all oh, panic, upset? What word you want to do for that? Oh, upset. I'm scared. Okay. And what if you're angry? Oh, I'm so upset. What might you use for words for that? You could write down anger. And when you're Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm really worried. I'm kind of upset and everything. So what words do you want to put to that strong feeling? And then if you're not feeling really good about yourself, you want to say, I'm feeling down, I'm feeling bad about myself. So this way you try to help for the child to be able to put words to emotions. And then if they're feeling upset, and sometimes I often don't know what they're upset about, well, just Point to your finger. Or if uh, your teacher and something uh, major happened in, in your class, let's say it was uh, you know, one of the parents that had a major accident or a death or something, and you know, the classroom were kind of upset about that. You could have the whole class just holding on to their thumbs and just thinking about their, their classmate and their family. Or if there's strong anger going on, so if the kids were having a fight, just have them sit down and hold their finger. Hold this middle finger, one for anger. And a neat little exercise, and again, this is in the uh, handout, is there's a neat little poem that you can do um, when you want to do this with the kids. So it's called My ha Helping Hand. So let's just pretend that we're five-year-olds, seven-year-olds, whatever. And let's begin with our thumb. When I feel down or a bit sad, I hold my thumb. I don't feel so bad. Next finger. My pointing fingers for when I panic, I can face my fears, whether small or gigantic. Mm. My next finger. When anger makes me want to explode, my middle finger is the one I hold. And when I'm worried about feeling any old thing, I hold the ring that's meant for a ring. And finally, my little finger helps me see I'm a fine person. I'm glad to be me. So as we did here, just walking through the poem with, uh, with kids can be a really uh, beautiful way of um, going through the, uh, the finger holds, which is really to help us get in touch with emotions and not just think of here, but how it's affecting our whole body and our feelings and, and those around us. I want to end with just a very simple little um, exercise. It's a great closing. Let's all put our palms of our hands together and let's create a lotus flower in front of our face and just bring up beautiful loving kindness energy from the lotus flower coming up from our heart space up into our mind our head our thinking and now let's just 
close the tips and create a heart. And let's take our lotus card and, and let's just give compassion to all those here who joined on the webinar today with me. Sending you compassion, loving kindness, and indeed to everyone in the world. And I'll just bring it into ourselves. Compassion for ourselves, loving kindness. And let's just hold our heart and just breathe in slowly. And exhale. One more time. May you be well, may you be happy. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy. Namaste. Great. Well, thank you for um, joining me in doing these practices. As I said, um, you can read about them and they're described in the handout, but uh, it's all about active learning and you know getting down below the ears and just thinking about it. So I tried to show how you can use these techniques to help yourself and build your resiliency while at the same time, how you can take them and adapt them for you uh, using uh, with kids, um, using with, with young adults. You can use them with older adults. That's the beauty of these practices. You can just with some minor modification, it can run the whole, uh, virtually the whole um, lifespan. So um, we now have some time for, uh, for questions and discussion. Yeah, thanks for that, Dr. Skinner. Um, yeah, so please put any questions you have in the Q&A. We do have some that have already come through, but feel free to continue adding them in. Um, the first question we have is how to engage kids in doing these calming, regulating activities when they don't want to. So how can we do that, Dr. Skinner? You know, that's a great question. <laughs> it's a tough question. Um, I mean, the key answer is you, you have to kind of roll with the resistance and not trying to bang it on and, and being authoritative, you know, you mustn't do this. So, uh, and it could vary a bit whether you're a, you're a teacher or whether you're a, you know, a health professional or, or whether you're a parent. Um, so a number of things and things that I found useful, one is to just do it together. <laughs> so, you know, let's, let's have some fun. You wanna do some animal frolic. So you actually name it. So it, you sort of create a, a, a playful kind of a fun atmosphere for it. And, uh, and come on, join me in it, you know, and, and see, uh, you know, if, if that helps. The other is uh, how to make it uh, relevant. Um, uh, one of my uh, grandson, Sean, is a real kind of developing star playing basketball, playing on one of sort of the elite teams. He's uh, nine years old and and uh, he's very serious. But Sean, like before the games, you know, you want to be able to calm down, you know, let's go through some shaking. So I teach Sean to go through it and do the shaking and, uh, a few other sort of simple practices so he can sort of calm down and because he's really motivated right and he just sort of takes it to it so it fits in with something he's really keen or motivated about um so those are uh, you know some suggestions and and the other is well maybe this is not the right time you know um, um depending sort of on so try to fit in with the context like i said with a teacher if there's been a major event going on sort of with the students with a certain emotion, how you might want to do that, like dealing with grief or what's happening or what's happened to the climate, we're all concerned about that. So try to sort of link it, you know, sort of within that context. So so those are, are some suggestions, and I've just mentioned, you know, a few that work with me, but just, um, you know, um, just use your, your experience and, uh, you know, make it playful. And if now isn't the right time, then it's not the right time, you know, save it for Look for opportunities, you know, where you could fit it in. Okay. Thanks. And then what can we do in the moment of stressful situations? So these are great strategies that we can do when we're on, you know, just taking some time, but can we use any of them when we're in the moment working through some stressful situations? Yes. Um, the, um, Shaking is one of the absolute best. You can do that sitting front because you just want to somehow, I'm just so upset or agitated about that. Well, if you're going into shaking, and that really helps let it go, let it go, let it go. And usually you're caught up with what's called the monkey brain. Your mind is just racing around, racing around. So how do you get that thing to slow down? And you can do shaking even like now, just sitting in a chair. Oh, just, you know, I got a phone call. So it would upset me. You can just do shaking and, and just close your eyes. 
and ah, 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 make noise, ah, ah, let it go, let it go. Um, the other ones is dealing with the, uh, you know, I call the uh, abdominal breathing. So it's really uh, just a, a slow meditative breathing. So if you put your hand over your belly and just inhale slowly through your nose, give out, and then in, exhale slowly. And just soften your gaze and just clear your mind, letting go, letting go, letting go. And what you're activating is the parasympathetic system, right? So, and if you, it's really as you take a slower out breath that then lowers your heart rate, your blood pressure, and uh, gets you into that sweet, calming state. So, those are two shaking almost immediately, like a really upset, shaking, and the other calm down and just try this, you know, basically it's a deep, slow breathing in and out. And you can do them anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Yeah, I'll definitely be doing the uh, holding my fingers in, in some meetings when I might be a little bit nervous to speak or a little bit shy. So perfect. Um, another question we have is, can these techniques be applied to other age groups? So you mentioned that uh, briefly, but feel free to expand. Yeah, I mean, I, I found it um, to me... <laughs> Out so short of a real infant, uh, you, you can take them and, and adapt them through uh, throughout the lifespan. And with uh, younger children, um, uh, you make it you make it it's playful, and it's the things like you know the animal frolics. Now you make it into little games, you know, or the finger holds. You make it into little poems. So you just you you make it real games. Um, with adolescents. Um, um, you can do it almost as with adults, pretty well straight up, but knowing that uh, you may find even like more resistant question asked, how do you get them to do that? So I think mm -hmm. you need to be careful not to be um, authoritative and say you must do this, but link it in on how they can find sort of that, that helpful. And particularly for um, kids and for adolescents, but for everyone, you may also want to exercise where you identify your safe space. So if you, something really triggers a strong emotion, you get really upset that you can go to that space. And when I'm teaching my course, I have our student identify what is my meaningful space, my safe space. For me, it's on our back deck. I just can go there and look at our backyard and just everything just calms down for me. And I can visualize that. Even right now, it's cool. I'm not on my back deck, but I can visualize being there. And if, if I'm getting really upset, I can go there. Um, with younger uh, adolescents, you may want to do um, more um, active versions. So of Qigong, the more active, say, versions of Tai Chi or other sort of martial arts, because it's just, it's much more uh, a physical, which, uh, but it then also is dealing with that emotion, but you get them doing at the more physical level. As you get older and older and a little more frail, you just need to be careful to do them gently. And we call it the underdo principle. Um, Never go over 80% of your max and less is more. Like nature never hurries yet, everything gets accomplished. So it's really fascinating. Go a bit slower and we do these movements slow and it really calms the mind, calms the body. And it helps mentally. We start showing that like Tai Chi and these practices uh, for older people, it helps keep your balance with preventing falls. That's a big issue with the frail elderly. And secondly, it actually can increase your cognitive capacity of functioning. We're all worried about your mental decline. So it's like giving your, it's like getting a whole body tune-up, you know, and it's motion is medicine. It's motion is potion. So that's the beauty of it, that you can adapt it through. And, and with bit different ability levels, um, you can do virtually all of them sitting, you can do most of them lying down. And so you can adapt it to if people have different you know, ability uh, sort of concerns that, uh, you know, you can do the adaptations with them. But yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. They're Thank all great you. Um, we've got a couple more. Um, are these stress relieving techniques specific to any particular emotion? So anxiety, anger, sadness? Um, Yes, and to no. Um, <laughs> yes, some of them are, certainly the finger holes we went through. Um, 
And, but the other ones, like when I'm teaching <coughs> to Qigong, I may do one like for managing certain sort of strong emotions now or for certain parts of our body. But the body itself, it, it, it's, it's not, it's kind of made of parts, but they're all interconnected, right? So even though we may be working on a particular sort of focus, like the holding of this, this is particularly good for dealing with anxiety or headache, but it can help your overall mental state or your well-being. So it can have some specific effects, but also these sort of general effects where it's just really enlivening and energizing in your whole body. And, and the key is balance. This is in Western medicine, it's homeostasis. If your blood pressure gets too high, your heart rate's too high, right? You're not well. And in Eastern medicine, it's all about balancing the energies, the yin and the yang. And if it's balanced, then you're healthy. So um, so it's balancing your, your emotions because they're interconnected. So the answer is there are some specific focus, but it's also having this general overall effect. So you get, um, huge benefits. Uh, an example, I mean, research showing uh, I'm, I'm doing mindfulness meditation, or we did a version of that today, standing with mindfulness. That it can produce the same effects, you know, if someone dealing with uh, dealing with with, uh, with depression and taking particular medication. But but the mindfulness is then not only dealing with that particular symptom, you know, of feeling down. It's helping me deal with the overall sort of mind or body state. So to me, that's the beauty of it. And uh, so yeah, another good question. Thank you. I look okay. at it. To me, it's a total body tune up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that definitely felt like it as I was following you through the moves. Definitely feel rejuvenated and a little bit more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Um, so we mentioned tension and anxiety uh, a few times. Is there are there particular um, connections to sadness and that emotion in uh, these mo movements? Well, the sadness um, or grief is coming out really on the thumb if we're going through the finger hole, mm -hmm. and um, and maybe a little bit on kind of getting on the worry or or really I guess on the self esteem one if you're feeling down about yourself. So it's kind of these two. Mm -hmm. things coming together and uh, the matching of that. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Dr. Skinner, for your time. And thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, if there are any other questions, please let us know. Um, I am going to put a survey link in the chat, and I will also send it in a follow-up message. Please feel free to share your feedback. Uh, this helps us continue to offer um, useful and helpful webinars to all of you folks. Um, yeah. I also do want to share with you that we have um, a Stress Busters activity book that you can also um, make use of. So this is developed from our Kids Have Stress 2 grades four to six program. And there are a variety of activities in there that you can also work through with children to help manage stress. I know if Pam, if I can put up, uh, if I do yeah. share screen, my, uh, let me see, yeah, okay. People see this? Yep. So you see down at the bottom, um, you have my email address, hskinner at yorku.ca. And then there's a website for uh, stress busting. This is a series I've been running now for three years and uh, it's available online. If you go to the website and look under recordings, you can see over 200 sessions that we've done up to date. We keep recording it. So I lead uh, Qigong, the mind-body practices. That was similar to the first three or four we did today. And then Susan Harris, my partner, does mind bus meditation. So it's there for the broader community. And uh, if you're interested, uh, check out the website and send me an email. And the formal spring series will start again the 1st of May, but you can go on to the site and click on recordings and, and see our previous practices. Wonderful. Thank Thanks, Dr. Skinner. And the recording for this session will be available on the Strong Minds, Strong Kids website um, by tomorrow. So you'll be able to see it there if you haven't um, been able to sit through the full session today.
Thank you, Dr. Skinner, for your time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We look forward to another session in the future. Have a good one.